Hello everyone, I'm Emma and I'm your storyteller for today. Tonight's story is called How to Go Back to School. Parsley Nimblewood Saves the World Again and it's written by Mike Ford and illustrated by Rebecca Sampson. Chapter 1 The Great Crate Friday 22nd May 2020 This morning on our doorstep there was an enormous box. Not a cardboard box like normal deliveries but heavy splintery real wood. The box was so big that you could easily fit my brother Bo inside. Evil Egbert, my tiny evil imaginary friend, suggested that we cram Bo in and cover it in stamps then post him to the North Pole. But before I could follow through with Egbert's evil plan, Mum popped through the door. We spent ages trying to get the box open, but every side was nailed down. Mum tried levering the top with her biggest crowbar and then just whacked it with a hammer again and again. When Bo started whacking the box with Rage Rock, Mum decided we should retreat inside and regroup. Rage Rock is a huge jagged stone that we painted a big angry face on. He helps us deal with anger and sometimes smash things. Mum got out her phone and started watching videos of people trying to open wooden crates. Meanwhile, me and Bo tried to guess what was inside. I thought it might be a giraffe with its neck all curled up like a spring. Bo thought it was probably an asteroid with a dinosaur egg inside. Bo is obsessed with space dinosaurs and no matter how often I tell him that dinosaurs have never and will never live on different planets, he still believes. I wandered outside to inspect the crate again. Maybe the thing inside wasn't actually good or exciting. Maybe it was something boring and disgusting like a million tins of mung beans. Or maybe it was something really bad like a hungry goat-eating wolf. I was starting to wonder whether it was a good idea to open the box at all when I saw, in tiny writing, printed at the back, this way up. It was upside down. Once we'd flipped it the right way round, it was very easy to open. Inside there was a strange collection of objects. One shiny black and white feather, a stone that was perfectly smooth and shiny on one side, but knobbly and bumpy on the other. Dozens of little sparkly marbles, an enormous cake covered in bright purple icing and little plastic dinosaurs, and two tins of mung beans. Unfortunately, everything had been a bit shaken about by the flipping, so the stone and the marbles had smashed into the middle of the cake like meteors. Bo thought this was brilliant. We used Mum's crowbar to lever up the slightly smushed cake and underneath there was an ancient looking yellowed old scroll. Dearest Parsley and Bo, you are cordially invited to spend the weekend at my humble abode. This box contains a few small gifts to help you on your way. The cake is to celebrate seeing my two favourite people in the world after such a long time. The marbles are for all the fun we'll have together. The pebble is a new addition for your stone collection and the feather is for hope. I've also included a tin of, tin of mung beans for each of you. This is to remind you that staying with me is going to be very different to normal with some new rules we'll have to follow. Sometimes it might feel annoying and boring, just like mung beans. I can't wait to see you both. Lots of love, Dad. We were going to see Dad! Bo had picked up the plastic dinosaurs and was running around the grass squealing with excitement. I was dancing around the garden with him. We normally see Dad every other weekend, but because he works as a nurse in the big city, we now haven't seen him for two months. Mum picked up the cake and brought it inside whilst Bo played with the icing covered marbles. I took another look in the box and noticed something else. There was a tiny metal latch right at the bottom. I stretched my arm all the way in and reaching with my fingertips flicked it up. It was a secret compartment. 
Inside there was a dark brown leather bound diary and a tiny scrap of paper that said, P.S. I knew you'd look for secret compartments, Parsley. I loved your last book and can't wait for the sequel. I grabbed the diary, the stone and the feather and ran up to my room. I wanted to start writing straight away, but just as my pen was about to touch the paper, my brain froze. I didn't know what to write about this time. People are starting to go back to school and I'm not really an expert in that at all. I've never been to school. I'm probably the last person in the world you should listen to about going back to school. You should probably close this book now, put it away and never read it again. You should probably tell all your friends that this book is a complete waste of time. But then I looked at the stone and realised what feeling it was meant to be. The flat shiny side looked happy and excited, but the bumpy side looked worried and nervous. It was a two-faced stone. It was the feeling of butterflies. That's how I feel about going to see Dad. It's going to be amazing seeing him, but it's also going to be really different. With all the changes and new rules that we'll have to follow, I have no idea what to expect. And maybe that's how everyone going back to school feels. Is that right? What do you think will be the same or different about going back to school? What are you looking forward to most? Do you have any worries about it? How do you think other people feel about it? And that's the end of tonight's chapter. Night night. See you soon. Sleep tight. <laughs>